YouTube and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. This is Question of the Week time. Uh, for Question of the Week, you know how this works. I have posted a question last week and I also allowed personal questions. I have the tablet here. I'm sorry for any shaking like this because you're on the cell phone and I can't really concentrate as I'm holding the tablet at the same time. But anyway, uh, yeah, so Question of the Week. Uh, the first question is... This past summer, we saw an explosion of session IPAs and saisons at the market. What style do you think will become the next fad beer in the coming year? This is from Winter is Coming. And Winter is Coming, to answer your question, I think it's a beer style that we've kind of already seen a lot of. But every brewery seems to be doing it right now, whether it be natural or kettle done. And that sours. Everybody's doing either like Brett sours or... Fuck off, cat. Brett Sours, or Kettle Soured Sours, or Real Sours. And everybody seems to be doing them. And I think that's going to be the big, 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 big thing anytime soon. As it's huge right now. And Saison's and Session IPAs are there too. IPAs were the first. Uh, just Belgian everything basically was the second. Yeah, it it is... What it is. Um, next is from Kev Official. Ke is it a Kev Official or is it like just spelt funny or is it Kev of CL? Kev of the Sky. Kev off Sky. Uh, I'm going Kev Official. Anyway, uh, what beer do you recommend as a daily or weekly drinking beer and what beer do you usually drink when you are not tasting a new one? Uh, that one is a hard one to answer because I very rarely drink new beers to be 100% honest. Well, old beers. I try not to drink the same beer more than once. Um, you'll see me on uh, Beer Dubes United basically drink the things I, I like to drink more than once. It's a... Uh, fuck off. Yeah. yeah, that's right. You saw me do that with my nose. Yeah. Um, basically things like... Uh, Innocent Gun Original, uh, Mill Street's Cobblestone Stout or Vanilla Porter. Um, if it's a macro beer, usually a Sleeman's product. Uh, I actually don't hate Miller Lite, I know that now. Um, yeah, but for, for the most part, uh, the beers I buy on a regular basis just to have in the fridge is like... Uh, uh, Rochefort 10 and Rochefort 8 because they're an amazing price when they're at the LCBO for what you're getting. Uh, Innocent Gun Original in the cans because in the cans they're an amazing price and the bottles are not really. Uh, you know what, St. Ambrose uh, Apricot Wheat, I actually enjoy that every once in a while. Uh, those are those are like my, my daily drinkers, the stuff that I will drink more than once. Uh, Ryakis, never been to a, okay, no, he was just answering that. Oh, my question for you is, if you were paying the same price as we are in the States, would you get blasted way more often? Um, the chance is there. My family is Irish, my family's full of alcoholics. Uh, I do like my reviewing because it makes sure that I drink in moderation in the point that I know that there's one or two days that I'm drinking and that's it. And it's usually either when I'm chatting with you guys online or when I'm doing my reviews and that is all. And uh, But at the same time, I, I kind of am paying the same price as the Americans when you look at craft beer. Uh, what the Americans get super, super cheap, like $10 a two for and all that is macro brews and budget brews and would I drink a lot more macro and budget probably not I probably still wouldn't get blasted all that much because it's not really the stuff I'm into I can drink the stuff I I'm actually not such a beer snob that I go no I can never drink a macro beer no there are a lot of macro beers I like a lot of those corn and sodas that I don't mind and the only thing I think would be more often being would be I'd have more uh, another 2 4 or 2 in the house at all times instead of the way it is right now where I might have 10 beers to review and 5 or 6 beers on top of that plus whatever's in the uh, over on the other side in the in the cellar Beer Zerker I don't think, uh, okay never mind that's his comment and Beer Zerker also said Beer Zerker 80 and that is 
ever thought of reviewing beard oil? I've never used beard oil. I don't even know why. Like, yeah, I understand you're, you're talking about the fact that my beard is so curly that it curls up and all that. And I get that, but I've never used beard oil. I've never thought of buying beard oil. I've never cared about buying beard oil. Um, it's just not something I've wanted to do. Uh, I do have three private messages as well. Uh, so I won't read their names because they're private messaged. But uh, one of them asked me about specific breweries at the beer festival. Here's what I'll tell you about my beer festivals. I sent out 179 emails. Of those 179 emails, a lot of the breweries I've worked with before, and I have 10 breweries lined up for November's festival. I'd like 12 to 14. And I have 15 so far lined up for for May, and we'd like to hit about 35. Um... I've had answers from 18 breweries. The other 150... Uh, well, I said I sent out 175? No, was it? Uh, no, it would have been about 179 when you add the cideries as well. So, the 160-ish breweries and cideries that have not responded to me, some of them have gotten double, double emails sent out. Some of them have had phone calls, some of them have had paperwork dropped, some of them I've even been in contact to where they said, oh yes, we have gotten your email, and then just never responded. Uh, so that's where we're at. I am not the Toronto Festival of Beer, I'm not anything like that, so I don't have drive power, I don't have anything like that, so I guess I can just be ignored. Uh, I guess they don't think I'd ever talk about it. Uh, there are breweries that have told me before, yes, we want to be in all your festivals. And I sent them the information, and they said nothing. And I sent them, hey, did you get that information? Yeah, we'll look at it at some point and get back to you. Okay. Fuck you. Uh, basically, the way it is, uh, just just say no. If you're not interested, just say no. Three of the breweries here in Niagara have not answered. And you know what, I'll name them. Oast House has not answered. I dropped paperwork off at Oast House. I've called Kian, and I've emailed every one of his email addresses with all five of my email addresses. Um, Silversmith, not responded, I've sent, uh, five, five different emails to five different people, and I've sent people into the brewery to talk to them, and Niagara Brewing Company, the brand new brewing company here owned by Dino, has not answered either, and I've actually talked to them on Facebook, on Twitter, and in email form about it. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's just that type of thing. So, when people ask me why their certain brewery isn't there, because their certain brewery doesn't care to deal with uh, a nobody. Even if I'm doing something good, something that you like, say hi to the cat, they don't want to deal with a nobody, which is what they kind of think I am, because I'm not trying to make a profit. I'm trying to uh, do a festival that brings in a 1,000 to 1,500 people. Each brewery does not lose money. They actually make money, and the money goes to charity. And I don't know, I guess because I don't have a 100,000 uh, Miller Light drinkers come through the b building. I'm not good. I'm not good. It's okay, though. It's okay. Uh, another brewery where one of their salespeople was at the festival last year was like, Hey, man, this is the type of festival we have to be at. Why, weren't, why aren't we at this festival this year? And I told him, and he said, That will never happen again. Here's my personal email. Email me every time that you do something. We are going to be here. This is the type of festival we need to be at. This is more a, a, a craft beer person's festival, not a just get drunk festival. And I sent him the stuff. No response. So to the person that asked me about their brewery, you talk to your brewery. You put pressure on your brewery. You ask your brewery why they don't want to be part of it. I've done my part. I'll uh, email a few more of them one more time, because sometimes emails get lost, uh, but the ones I've already responded to in multiple times, they can, uh, they're can they off my list. I just won't email them or work with them again, and I won't work with them again because they don't have the ability or kindness to just say, no thank you. I don't care if you come to the festival or not. Just respond to me like you'd like me to respond to you. Like when you send me a message, Hey Chad, do you want to come and do a video for me doing this and this? Or, Hey Chad, do you want to come and do... If I don't say no, you'd be pissed off. You'd expect me to. So why isn't it the same the other way around? Um, I've also been asked about shirts. I do have some festival shirts. 
uh, still from last year. I have the purple ones that you see Lee and guys wearing. Uh, we 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 sell them cheap enough that we pay for them and make enough to build a new, uh, make enough to make a new one so that we always have a continue because I just want a whole bunch of people wearing the shirts to be honest with you I don't care about making a pro and that that comes down to I've had people ask me about merch and why I don't wear as much merch as I used to uh, after running festivals and after knowing how much I pay for a small lot of shirts I just don't care to pay cat Stop trying to force yourself on camera. There you go. You're on camera. Okay, you're on camera. There you go. Hoy, I'm Fester. Fuck you guys. Eh. Anyway, uh, after I've ran my own festival and all that and made my small allotment of shirts and known how much a small allotment of shirts costs, I don't care to pay $25 to $30 for a shirt because it's just branding for that company and it's branding for that company that costs them anywhere from 250 to seven dollars and it just doesn't it doesn't sit right with me when i'm doing that i will overpay on the beer because they actually made it they didn't pay somebody else to make it and everything else i will overpay on the beer and i will always support the craft that they do but i can't uh can't be bothered that way because I've even had people. Hey, when you do a beer mail, can you send? Can you get me a shirt? Uh, I can, but then you're only going to get a couple beers because I pay for as much of my stuff as I can. I'm not going to ever lie and say I haven't gotten any shirts or any hats or anything for free. But when I walk into a place, I try to pay for everything I bet you take out because regardless of what I'm doing, I'm there to support them. That's what I'm there to do. If I didn't care to support them, I wouldn't go in. Uh, and lastly is my question to you. Uh, also remembering that you can always ask personal questions and I will always answer them. I find it sad that, you know, I'll have like 150 views on these things and like five questions. Just ask a question. Just ask a question. It'll go, is my, is the, does the drapes match the carpet? Yeah, yeah, the carpet matches the drapes. Fuck you guys, okay? Um... My question to you is, do you hate cats? No, I, um, I fucking hate you. Um, my question to you, why are you purring in my ear? I don't like you. I know we've been stuck with each other for 12 years. I know. I'm no happier about it than you are. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm lost. I'm really lost. Uh, my question to you will be this. Where is your favorite place to drink your beer? Uh, for me, at home. And we, we've done a variation of this, this question before, but, uh, not, not a full simplistic like that just anywhere anywhere you can drink a beer where's your favorite place to do it for me home i don't like bars i don't like the bar scene i bounced at bars i've worked at, i work in a bar right now i i just don't care for it i also don't care to go into a bar and pay uh pay 625 for a labat blue which i don't even want to drink to begin with when I can get that whole case of Labatt Blue for $29. I just don't care for that. And then I always over tip because I work in a tipping industry. So I, I do slightly believe in karma, even though my karma has been horrible for some reason. Uh, so I, 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 yeah. Where's your favorite place to drink your beer? And when, uh, Actually, here's a second part of that question. Is there a lot of bars where you're from that would serve beer that you'd want to drink? That's the big question, I guess. Because if I go to a bar, I'm basically getting loaded on scotch and and whiskeys and stuff now and gin. Because they don't have beer that I care to drink. And even if they have beer that I'm indifferent to, like, say, Moosehead, which I can enjoy, and, and MGD, which I can enjoy, and Export and all that, it's at such an inflated price that I just don't care to touch it. 
Uh, again, MGD I can get for like $31 a 2 for. I do not want to pay $7 for a bottle of MGD. Third question for you from me before you give me your question. So, where's your favorite place to drink your beer? Do you have bars around you that, a lot of bars around you that serve beer you want to drink? And third, what's the average price of a beer in your area? If you go to the tourist area of Niagara Falls, it ranges from six twenty-five for domestic, which is the cheapest you're going to get, which is what we serve, to $10 for domestic. Now, if you're not anywhere in the tourist area, you're looking at like four fifty to five fifty, which is still a little expensive, but not as bad. The four fifty is like the hole in the wall uh, dives. Anyway, yeah, thank you. Bye.